Karl Renner Karl Renner was an Austrian politician of the Socialist Party. He is often referred to as the father of the Republic because he led the first government of German Austria and the first Austrian Republic in 1919 and 1920, and was once again decisive in establishing the present Second Republic after the fall of Nazi Germany in 1945, becoming its first president after World War II. Renner was born the 18th child of a German family of poor wine growers in Untertanowitz, then part of the Margraviate of Moravia, a crown land of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Because of his intelligence, he was allowed to attend a selective gymnasium in nearby Nikolsburg, where one of his teachers was Wilhelm Jerusalem. From 1890 to 1896 he studied law at the University of Vienna. In 1895 he was one of the founding members of the Friends of Nature organization and created their logo. In 1896 he joined the Social Democratic Workers' Party of Austria, representing the party in the National Council from the 1907 elections until its dissolution in November 1918. His interest in politics also led him to become a librarian for the Reichsrat. During these early years, he developed new perspectives on law all the while cloaking his innovative ideas under a variety of pseudonyms lest he lose his coveted post as parliamentary librarian. He was especially interested in the problems of the Austrian state, whose existence he justified on geographical, economic and political grounds. On the nationality question, he upheld the so-called personal autonomy, on the basis of which the supranational state should develop, and thereby influenced the agenda and tactics of the Social Democratic Party in dealing with it. As a theorist he was reckoned as one of the leaders of Austro-Marxism. In 1918, after the collapse of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, he was in the forefront of the provisional and the constitutional national assemblies of those Cisleithanian lands represented in the Reichsrat that predominantly spoke German and had decided to form a nation-state like the other nationalities had done. Renner became the first head of government of that newly established small German-speaking republic which refused to be considered the heir of the Habsburg monarchy and wished to be known as the Republic of German Austria. This name, however, was prohibited by the Entente. They also vetoed a resolution of the Constituent National Assembly in Vienna that German Austria was to be part of the German Weimar Republic. Even before the collapse of the Austro-Hungarian monarchy Renner had proposed a future union of the German parts of Austria with Germany, even using the word Anschluss. Austria had never been a nation in the true sense of the term. While the territory of called Austrian existed in one form or another for 700 years it was not a nation and had no unifying force other than the Habsburgs. Like other Austrian socialists, Renner believed that the best course was to seek union with Germany. He was the leader of the delegation that represented this new German Austria in the negotiations of St. Germain where the Republic of Austria was acknowledged but was declared to be the responsible successor to Imperial Austria. There Renner had to accept that this new Austria was prohibited any political association with Germany and he had to accept the loss of German-speaking South Tyrol and the German-speaking parts of Bohemia and Moravia where he himself was born, this forced him to give up his share in the parental farm if he, the peasant proprietor who turned Marxist, wanted to remain an Austrian government officer. Renner was Chancellor of Austria of the first three coalition cabinets from 1918 until 1920 and at the same time Minister of Foreign Affairs, backed by a grand coalition of Social Democrats and Christian Social Party. A wide range of social reforms were introduced by Redner's government, including unemployment insurance, paid holidays, the eight-hour workday, and regulations on the working conditions of minors, bakers, women, and children. State aid was also provided for the disabled, together with health insurance for public employees. In addition, a law was passed that provided for collective bargaining and the mediation of disputes. From 1931 to 1933, Renner was President of Parliament, the National Council of Austria. After the dictatorial Austro-Fascism period from 1934, when his party was prohibited, he even welcomed the Anschluss in 1938. Having originally been a proponent of New German Austria becoming a part of the Democratic German Republic, 
he expected Nazism to be but a passing phenomenon not worse than the dictatorship of Dolfus's and Shushnik's authoritarian one-party system. During World War II, however, he distanced himself from politics completely. In April 1945, just before the collapse of the Third Reich, the defeat of Germany and the end of the war, Renner set up a provisional government in Vienna with other politicians from the three revived parties Socialist Party, Austrian People's Party and Communist Party. On April 27, by a declaration, this provisional government separated Austria from Germany and campaigned for the country to be acknowledged as an independent republic. As a result of Redner's actions Austria was to benefit greatly in the eyes of the Allies as she had fulfilled the stipulation of the Moscow Declaration of 1943, where the foreign secretaries of US, UK and USSR declared that the annexation of Austria by Germany was null and void calling for the establishment of a free Austria after the victory over Nazi Germany provided that Austria could demonstrate that she had undertaken suitable actions of her own in that direction. Thus Austria, having been invaded by Germany, was treated as an unwilling party and the first victim of Nazi Germany. Being suspicious of the fact that the Russians in Vienna were the first to accept Redner's cabinet, the Western Allies hesitated half a year with their recognition, but his provisional government was in the end recognized by all four powers on October 20 and Renner was thus the first post-war chancellor. In late 1945, he was elected the first president of the Second Republic. Karl Renner died in 1950 in Vienna and was buried in the presidential tomb at the Zentralfriedhof. For most of his life, Renner alternated between the political commitment of a social democrat and the analytical distance of an academic scholar. Central to Redner's academic work is the problem of the relationship between private law and private property. With his Rex Institute des Privat Rex und ihr Sociale Function. Ein Beitrag zur Kritik des Bürgerlichen Rex, he became one of the founders of the discipline of the sociology of law. In this book, Renner developed a Marxist theory of the institution of private law. Renner argued that the separation of public and private law is a creation of capitalism, whereby the state enforces the interests of capital owners. His and Otto Bauer's ideas about the legal protection of cultural minorities were taken up by the Jewish Bund, but fiercely denounced by Vladimir Lenin. Joseph Stalin devoted a whole chapter to criticizing cultural national autonomy in Marxism and the national question. The 1977-1978 academic year at the College of Europe was named in his honor. Literary Remains Volume 3, Vienna, 1953, Reprint European Sociology 1975